Hello, Rish. How are you doing? Doing good. How about yourself? So we are here today to talk about some of our favorite devices from the LoRaWAN ecosystem and to talk about some of the really interesting ways they're being used, right? Yeah, so today uh, we're going to talk about the most commonly used devices and also cover or touch upon a bit on the business case as to how these devices are used by commercial businesses, what benefit it brings, and why do some devices stand out from the rest? Awesome. And we're doing this interview remotely. So I'm here in Berlin and you are... In Amsterdam. Cool. This is exciting. This is a fun way to do this. Um, everybody bear with us. Hopefully this goes smoothly. So today we're going to talk about a couple of devices. The Laird Centrius RS1, the temperature sensor. The Elsys EMS sensor. The Elsys ERS CO2, I believe. We have the Dragino uh, LHT65. A Sensoterra soil sensor. The Sodak Cow Tracker. And then an Eltron water meter. We'll go through all these devices one at a time and Rish will... We'll share some of the, the cool use cases for the devices. Let's start with the Laird Centrius RS1. The RS1 is a temperature sensor and it comes in three different flavors. Low temperature, then there's a mid temperature, and then there's a high temp model that measures up to 450C. The device is about 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Yeah, so uh, this device is one of the most common device that we see across our customer base. In essence, it's a very simple device. It does temperature humidity monitoring. The unique thing about this device is that it is quite industrial, it's ruggedized, and in, uh, for certain use cases, it even has an external temperature probe. So you can attach it and use it in uh, industrial fridges or use it in cold, cold chain monitoring. It's really easy to use. So you can just connect this device and uh, yeah, you can forget about this. The other aspect is that this device is available for the European band, US, North America, and Australian band. So you get the full global coverage with this one device. Simple device, easy to use. And that's, yeah, the Laird Centrius device. Next, I wanted to talk about the Elsys EMS. So that is a small sensor from Elsys, the Swedish company, I believe. It measures temperature, humidity, and has an accelerometer. And then it's also marketed as doing leak detection. Yeah, so this uh, is a really small, uh, compact device, and it can support a large uh, variety of use cases. So of course, it can be used for simple use cases such as temperature, humidity, monitoring, occupancy, door window sensors. So the use cases list is endless, and just like like the other device we covered earlier, this device is also available for European, North American, Australian, and a wide range of other frequency plans. So we see this use case in, uh, again, the most common one is again in the, in the monitoring temperature for a vaccine. That's one of the big use cases, especially with this device. But we also see this device in a lot of uh, buildings uh, where people use it for uh, conditional monitoring uh, uh, and in industrial buildings where they use it for, again, monitoring the environmental parameters. So uh, it's a Again, quite a common device. Okay. Yeah, vaccine monitoring sounds like it's pretty topical. Especially with this with this one, because you can put it like these uh, vaccines. Uh, it's good that you mentioned this. Uh, so these vaccine storage, they are done in these underground storage uh, where you have these large fridges. And because this device uh, has a really good antenna, you can put this device inside the fridge and then its range is so good that, uh, you know, these gateways that are placed inside the buildings, they're able to pick up the messages from these devices. So that's another aspect to, to, to look at this device that you can put this deep inside the fridges and you're still able to collect these uh, data from these uh, sensors. An advantage of having such a powerful communication technology like LoRa. Yes. The next device that we're going to talk about is the Elsys uh, ERS, Smart Building Sensor. This device is deployed a lot in the social houses, so particularly in the UK, uh, also in uh, a lot of uh, areas in Europe and also Australia. And the use case that we see is uh, in a lot of houses, social housing, you need to monitor the, the, the conditions of these houses. We see sometimes mold, damp, and these conditions change. So with this device, you're able to monitor that. And in case something goes wrong, you're able to also send someone to, to fix that particular problem. And I think you, you touched us on something we like to really highlight which is this integration of sensor data into actually actionable business processes. Tickets are actually created based on the data that comes from these sensors. Maintenance, for example, is done based on anomalies in that, in that sensor data, right? Quite an important topic. I mean, uh, we, we see that a lot of times people, they, they buy these sensors, they connect them, they have a dashboard, and then, you know, they, they, they think that they are solving a big problem. In our opinion, or at least what we see, the, the use cases that are successful, they always have a business positive use case. And what I mean by business positive use case is if you're measuring temperature, if you're measuring temperature humidity, and if you're just plotting it on a graph on a nice looking dashboard, it might look nice. But then again, you're not doing anything based on the data. But for instance, if 
you are getting the same temperature sense uh, humidity readings and you are fitting it or you are you have a closed system where if something happens then you know you have uh, a person goes in checks in and then it becomes a closed loop system this is these are the use cases where we see businesses making an ROI on their investment by using LoRaWAN uh, devices and these are the use cases that actually scale so a suggestion or uh, from from our side would be that look out for use cases where you actually have an action based on the sensor reading that you're getting. And those ELSIS, ELSIS devices, I did a review of one of them this year, the ERS CO2, and that measures uh, temperature, humidity, light, accelerometer, and CO2 in the air, and it's about eight centimeters by eight centimeters. The ELSIS devices I really liked because they're, um, they have a really nice app for, um, for configuring things like traffic lights and, yeah. and keys. Um, the app is really well designed, and then they have a, a really good battery life, um, and a nice calculator online where you can plug in exactly what your uh, conditions are, and then you can see exactly how long the, the battery should last. The next device that we have on the list is the Dragino LHT65. I did a review for one of those as well, and uh, and one thing that I noticed is that it looks like it's very easy to mount on something. It has these great uh, screw terminals, uh, has great battery life, and then also does temperature, humidity, and has an external probe where you can attach a variety of sensors that, uh, that Dragino produces. Yeah, so this particular device has been there for a long time. I mean, uh, I've seen this device, I think, for more than five years uh, now. And there's one thing about this device that this device is used in the masses, right? Uh, as you can clearly tell, this device is very simple. There isn't really a lot of uh, special things going on. It does one thing which does it really well and it's low cost so people can buy it in bulk and from our side uh, where we see this device used is especially in uh, retail and uh, uh, these uh, fast food restaurants where they need to monitor uh, their meat, they need to monitor their uh, food supplies and they have so many different sources uh, from where they get their food supplies and in order to maintain, in order to monitor the temperature levels you have a very easy cost-effective device which you you can put it, forget about it, and it keeps sending your temperature readings. So simple, but works, uh, and it's really an uh, effective device. Next up, we have the Sensoterra Soil Moisture Sensor. They make this product in, ver in a variety of depths. It's very, very easy to install. It's literally just stick in the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this device uh, is also quite, it's one of the, the, the old devices, but still is, it's quite effective. And it's, uh, again, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a simple device. Uh, it does soil moisture monitoring. And for a farmer, uh, especially when you have big farmland, uh, connectivity over there, uh, 2G, 3G, or any type of wireless connectivity, it's quite difficult or challenging to set that up. But with the LoRaWAN device, especially the one from Sensoterra, you're able to monitor the soil moisture levels across your farmlands with the simple device. And as Ben mentioned, it has different uh, depth levels. So depending on your crop, depending on the region that you are in, you can adjust the, the, the height. It's easy to use. We have the support for this device using uh, the, the device repository, so you can add it. And we have several customers in Canada, US, Australia using this device and making their operations quite easy. So simple device, easy to use. One of my favorites, the Sodak Cow Tracker. And I have written from the, uh, from the notes that it's compatible with cows, horses, wildebeest, and reindeer. So not just cows. Um, and then it's also Arduino compatible, so you can uh, make upgrades. And then it's also solar powered. So this is, uh, I think, a lot of people uh, who have tuned into the Things Conference before, they would have seen this device uh, being used uh, by Movement, one of our customers in Australia. But uh, besides Movement, uh, there are also a lot of other projects where this device is used. And as you can tell, it's a simple device. It uh, tracks your cattle. Uh, and again, for the most part, it is used for tracking cows. But as you mentioned, it can also be used for tracking uh, uh, buffaloes, horses, or you name it. The reason why this device is so common is, again, for a farmer uh, who has a l big farmland, tracking your cattle can be quite a tedious task, uh, especially in, in Australia where these farmlands are so huge, there is literally no, uh, no connectivity. So to make sure you have insight as to where your cows are, where your cattle is, and being able to geofence that, that makes it quite a compelling uh, device. Uh, the form factor is really attractive, and it is also suitable for these harsh environments. And then again, because it also has, uh, it can be powered through uh, solar, you don't have this hassle of batteries. So keeping the, in mind all these factors, this makes it an extremely useful device for a farmer. Uh, and this is again why this uh, device is showcased here. Being able to track your livestock from, from your phone, I think is very, very, very useful for farmers and, uh, and allows them to sleep 
peacefully at night knowing that their yeah. cattle is where they expect. Peace of mind. <laughs> yeah, that, that's priceless. The last device that we have on the list here is the Eltron smart water meter. So every house, household that you do uh, in, in Europe particularly, you are, there is a bit of this transformation where companies or households, they're moving from this manually taking the readings to having an automated way of taking these readings. And as you can imagine, if you have to go to every, each and every household and collect these meter readings, it can be quite a tricky task. Forget about like the, the whole logistical operation that uh, you have to carry out. So for a lot of companies involved in this particular space, especially the city councils or system integrators in between, for them having this device which you can put it up on your water meter, collect the readings, takes away the whole hassle the, of, of going to each and every locality, neighborhood and collecting this. So it makes their life quite easy and it's supported across a whole uh, different frequency plans. So again, you can use it in Europe uh, and you can also use it in, in the US, Australia, Asia. So quite a useful device and it serves its purpose uh, for uh, water meter readings. We've, we've gone over seven, seven popular devices from the LoRaWAN ecosystem and talked about some of the business cases. Rish, do you have any advice for people who are looking for devices? Before you start off on, on any LoRaWAN uh, use case or building a LoRaWAN solution, when it comes to selecting the right device, uh, these are the three main takeaways. The first one is make sure you know how, how is the supply line for a particular device is, uh, especially the times that we live in now with the component shortage and everything going around you may find that you selected a device and then your supplier is not able to fulfill your order and then you are stuck in this uh, middle ground where you don't have the, the supply from a device. So make sure that you reach out to this device maker and check on the supply lines for the foreseeable future so that will make it easy for you. The second one is support. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that this device, especially the firmware on the device, is supported not just now but also two years, three years into the future because these devices are going to be deployed for a long time and you want to make sure that these devices are supported in the future as well. And third, the most important one is that have a business positive use case. I think I covered it earlier, but this is very simple yet very uh, powerful where it's not just about putting up sensors and looking at the readings on a dashboard. The, when you put up these devices, it should feed into a closed loop system where it's there, there is a certain action that is being taken based on those sensor readings. So I think if you keep these three points in mind, uh, you will be off to a good uh, starting point with LoRaWAN devices. And uh, yeah, that's my uh, two cents on this. I hope you find this uh, useful. And uh, yeah, that's, that's me.